Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Walker Corporate Law and GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting and use the promo code START to receive your free trial. Today on This Week in Startups, Dan Gould, the co-founder of Chill.com, is with us. Tyler Crowley is going to drop an insight, and we're going to play Guess the Fake Startup. Stick with us. That's what it's all about, man. They said... Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Startups. I am your host, Jason Calacanis. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have gotten my ass kicked. I have kicked ass. I have raised money. I've lost money. I've made money. You name it, I've done it when it comes to startup companies. Uh, and through all that, one thing I've learned is that you miss 100% of shots that you do not take. Today on the program, I've got one of my favorite entrepreneurs. His name is Dan Gould, and he is a serial entrepreneur. What does that mean? Guy keeps swinging the bat, and I love guys like that. That's my kind of blue-collar, hard-working entrepreneur. He's not a one-hit wonder. He's a guy who's, you know, hit the ball. He's got hit with the hit with the ball. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> He's got hit in the balls. <laughs> he got hit in the balls. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that, that's sort of every day in the startup world. That's every day in the startup world, and that's what we do here on this week in startups. We break down what it means to build a great company from nothing. From nothing, just with the sheer force of will. If you watch this program every week, week in and week out, I will teach you how to be a winner, how to be a samurai, how to pick yourself up off the ground after you've gotten your ass kicked and then kick some effing ass. That's what it's about, people. And that's what we do here on This Week in Startups. For the love of God, Tyler, help me out. What was in that sandwich you just ate? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Woo! Wow. I have a fire today. I, yeah. Oh, is that Red Bull he just drank? What, what, yeah, we get, he had some I monster did, yeah, I drank this. Monster monster. Monster. I tell you what. Yeah. And you know what? Our entire startup, <laughs> if they're watching, they're all, they're all drinking that. We're shipping them a bunch. This is it. Hey, can somebody, do me a favor, Mo, our sales guy moved to New York. Mo, get these guys as a sponsor. I love this crap. Oh, it's delicious. Wow. You ever drink this? No. Mm, I don't know what's in this. Yeah. I think they put crack cocaine in it. And literally, <laughs> a secret ingredient, in. cocaine. Uh, really it's speed. Yeah. What's in here? It's see. I think I'm reading the label. It says caramel, carbonated Tar water, and uh, a lot of what's that stuff that everybody's on the kids today? Crystal meth. There it is. Crystal meth. Mm. Ah, I love that stuff. <laughs> All right. If you want to influence this program, if you want to join the back channel, if you want to be even more of a samurai and you want to learn how to kick even more butt, join the back channel. What is the back channel? It's a secret mailing list that's not so secret anymore. You can join it, 150 people are on it. We ask you to donate to the program, anything from $2 to $200 a month. You pick and you all get access and you get to come here and watch the show live. It's all kinds of great stuff. Go to twistlist.co, twistlist.co. That's the This Week in Startups list and .co because they were a sponsor on the program. We'd like to support them so we went with .co, twistlist.co. Go check that out and then you will get access to the secret email list that Tyler's on and I'm on, and we talk about the show, and people help each other with their startups. It's been fantastic. It's really a great experience. Um, and it's almost as good of an experience as using GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting, I was just on an angel investing meeting. I said actually no. I had to do a, I turned down two, you do angel investing, Dan? I, I used to do angel investing. I'm, I'm no longer active, and we can talk about. We'll talk about like exactly that. why, but I did two meetings this week. I said no to both companies. But it wasn't because I didn't think they were great companies. It's because I, I get pitched on two. I could do literally 50 investments a week. And I literally get contacted 50 yeah. times a week. But anyway, both of the meetings went really well. One was a social gaming company. And the other one, uh, I can't really say with that. It's a metrics company, but I'm just going to leave it at that. But anyway, we both had 30, 40-minute conversations on GoToMeeting. I felt like I was in the room with the people. And I found them on AngelList. Um, or I should say, they contacted me on AngelList. And by I said, the way, I'm an angel investor in AngelList. So that's you're an investor in AngelList. First angel investor in AngelList. They, really? Yeah. Um, how much did you put in? Ten. Uh, I think ten or fifteen. It was small, but can I can I buy half of your shares at a fifty percent on whatever you pay? Uh, wait, at fifty percent of what I paid? No, no, one hundred fifty percent. I'll give you fifty percent. Uh, I don't even know what I have. I'll, I'll, 
I like what they're doing. They're doing a great job. I, but, but I don't have we'll any shares. Offline. Can I get half the shares that you have? And I'll give you, I'll pay you double. <laughs> Whatever your valuation you paid, I'll double it. And I'll take half your shares. Off your hands. I don't even know what valuation anyway, I have. Them. We'll, exactly. we'll talk offline. Uh, anyway, go to meeting, go to meeting. It is the way to have a professional meeting. And when you get that go to meeting email that you're going to be in the meeting, you click it, you feel like, oh God, it's just going to work. Not like when you're using these other products that are out there, free products. They're really kind of ghetto, the free products. They don't work all the time. You, you, I, I'm, I'm not gonna like slander any companies and say that they don't work, but I can tell you half the time when I use these other products that are free, I don't get connected, or the sound's not working, or uh, somebody's missing for the meeting, and somebody, you don't understand what I'm talking oh, about. Go to meetings, great. The it's guys so solid. behind it, they, you know, they were doing all sorts of different things, and they just learned. They were talking to customers. I was, uh, you know, Klaus Schauser and those folks. They yeah. were, were no longer involved with it, but. They're, they're they just, built it. They were solid. They they, solid. they really cared about how to build a simple product that just worked, and that was their differentiating. That's thing. the legacy, isn't it? Yeah. The legacy of go to meeting meetings that actually work. And I'm telling you, when you use the HD faces, you feel like you're in the same room with people. The HD quality is it's I'm I'm shocked by how good it is. It is unbelievable. And you can share your desktop, and you can give other people control of your desktop, and it works. And 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 iPhone, iPad. Android. I mean, what do I have to do, people? It's white listed partnerships. I only will talk about products I actually use, and I use GoToMeeting, and I love GoToMeeting. I literally use it, I would say, at least five times a week, which is pretty much daily, except for the weekends when I'm trying to spend time with my family. I don't use GoToMeeting, I meet with them in person. But let me tell you something when my daughter goes to college or something like that, or you know, when she becomes the president of China, the first elected president of China, whatever she's going to wind up doing with her life. I mean, it's up to her what she does. As long as it's awesome and epic and I'm very proud of it. But she can do anything she wants. Uh, that poor girl. That poor girl. Yeah. <laughs> the expectations are going to be high. Oh, God. Anyway, I love you, GoToMeeting. I love you guys for supporting the program. And if you love this program, just say thank you at GoToMeeting on your Twitter account. You go to... Meet at go to meeting. They love when they see that. The the partners and the advertisers love, 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 love when you thank them. And it, the person I'm talking to right now, it only takes one or two of you to do it, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, everybody thanked us." It really means a lot to me personally when you thank them, and it means a lot to them. So go ahead and thank at go to meeting. Ah, on the program today, Dan Gould is a serial entrepreneur. I've known him for, gosh, a long time. Uh, we both sold our previous companies about the same time. He sold his to. Um, News Corporation, it was called Nuru, and it was an RSS collaboration tool that had tremendous buzz, and then you sold it, and I don't think anybody ever saw it, <laughs> and it sort of disappeared. Uh, you then uh, spent a couple of years there, went into hiding, and came out with this new thing, name set, you did some angel investing, you got a Tesla Roadster in Orange, uh, shortly after I got mine, and I was a little, little bit after, Yeah, and I, I, uh, then you do Namesake, which was a really interesting sort of community. And then lo and behold, chill.com. Great domain name, great product. Everybody's been talking about it. Um, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm it's excited. How long have you been here? Yeah, I, I tend to keep a pretty low profile. I, I hide out. I'm not nearly as good at all this media side as you are, but it's fun to be on. But you do uh, love building product. Oh, absolutely. You're a product guy. Companies. You're a product, product guy's product guy. I, I would say almost, so I've worked for uh, 10 years with my co-founder, Brian, yeah. and I'm more of a, a pure techies techie yeah. who loves product, right. and he's more of a product guy's product guy. Mm. So. so you make sure the tech works, he makes sure the UX works, and it's a pretty good collaboration. Let's talk about your most recent chill.com. People on the program will know chill because I've been saying, hey, go to the chill room. Essentially, let's pull it up on the screen here. I, I, I guess I could pull it up on my screen and then we'll see it. Um, here's what a chill room looks like. You're seeing me in the chill room, in the chill room. That not that gonna create like an, one yeah, of those effects? <laughs> really, is it doing it or not? I think so. Well, we've got picture in a picture, but oh, there it goes. <laughs> it's so funny to watch that happen. I, I, I never get uh, tired of that. So anyway, um, chill is you wrap around a yep. video stream and you and you build presence around video is that well so it it's a video it? sharing experience and video means tons of different things nowadays so sure. video uh, started out as you know okay some YouTube clips but really there are clips there's sports there's music there's live events there are short form content web shows movies now online so there's a bit of everything out there. And we've said, we wanna have ways to share it, but really create an experience around it. Mm. And 
a lot of times what happens is you go on and you see things where, you know, oh, I'm the only one here, I'm watching some funny video someone sent me, but it's not an experience where you feel like you're with other people. Right. And It's a solitary experience. Yeah, and what we found is just this idea of being with other people, of being there at the same time, communicating with them, seeing faces, you know, as avatars in this case, really changes how you experience it. It just feels magically different, even though it's, you know, still the same video. And what was the inspiration for the product? So we had this site, uh, Namesake, up and going. Right. And you may want to talk a little bit about it later. But yeah. what happened was it was about real-time communication. People would go into rooms and they would have conversations. And while they'd have conversations with each other, people got super engaged in them, uh, but they'd always be posting media. So we had little bits of adding media in here. Oh, you can post a video in the stream. And what happened very quickly was the media dominated it. So I did a, a report of what were the top uh, conversations that happened on Namesake. And every single one of them was something around video. Yeah, yeah. Tyler was on there. Yeah, Tyler was the definitely yeah. so it was hanging like out all the time. Your favorite hip hop videos from the 80s or whatever. Yeah. It was, yeah. But that, we had built Namesake for, yeah, yeah. for a totally different thing. Yeah. It was built as a professional communication site. Right, and it evolved into sharing videos. Was, for, so yeah. you said, well, let's just do it right, right? Rather than build uh, this, you know, keep shoehorning media into there, let's say, what would the great experience around video be? What would mm. the great experience around media be? And let's build Well, then you also that. built kind of the real time. It went from being um, message, 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 into like real time chat. It got very yeah. fast and it felt very chatty with the was video. It, was the concept behind namesake that would be a better Twitter? like a threaded and higher end Twitter with threaded messages and that kind of thing? So when we first started out, we had the idea of we wanted to build a better business, so a better professional communications tool. Because ah. to say, no one communicates with each other on LinkedIn, right? It's a, people upload their LinkedIn's resume. It's a resume database. Yeah, it's a resume database. So we said, look, in a professional context, I mean, look at this show, right? Yeah. You've got people excited talking about startups. Right. But no one does that on LinkedIn, right? I mean, LinkedIn's no. a great site, but not for that. Right. So we had originally said, let's build somewhere that people can express things, where they can communicate and do what they care about. So we tried lots of things. And the but thing, it didn't work. That part didn't work, right? Why? Uh, I think a lot of things. One of which is you, when there is an established thing in the world, like a LinkedIn, you do have to be 10 times better. Then, Not twice as good, 10 oh, times. Easy, twice as good doesn't, doesn't cut it for... Well, a big site has huge, huge mind share, so everyone knows about it, they think about it. Big network effects. So, you know, I want to go where I know everyone else is. Mm. So, uh, when, when I go onto a site and I see a few people who care about what I'm interested in, but I want to know when I go onto a professional site that Jason's there, that Tyler's there, that everyone is there. So, the network effect is critical. And you also said the brand recognition. I guess the habit of going to Google, habit. the habit of going to LinkedIn. Yeah. But MySpace was a habit for a long time. Um, and Facebook was, was, in fact, 10 times better. Yeah. Um, Five times better? Something along those lines. But definitely it's, more than twice as good. Yeah. It, in your estimation. I think so. It's yeah. uh, the history, and we could uh, go down that path of, of the collapse of MySpace. I saw sure. some of it. Yeah, you uh, were in the same building. I was, yeah, didn't, never worked for MySpace, but at least was in the same building. And they figured out a lot of stuff. Facebook couldn't have happened without MySpace. Right. Having happened first, it taught everyone that we we're going to have these social networks. And it taught, I don't think if they had done real identity in the MySpace time, that mm -hmm. it actually would have worked. People were too afraid of all these changes. So they learned, oh, I can be part of this network. Right. But then once they got used to that, having real identity was amazingly powerful, but MySpace couldn't go back and do it. They had ah. locked So they had into gone that. so far west, they couldn't go east. Yeah, it, it was a really tough place to be in. And what, what do you think was the single thing that made Facebook so much better than MySpace? Was it the real identity? Was it the speed? Was it the I design? What was it? Hmm. So with Facebook, I think at first it's they started with small networks. So they started by launching on college campuses. So it was people you knew. Right. And I know you in real life. And I feel like, you know, hey, I have a relationship with Jason. You know, I've, I've hang out with Tyler, right? And if it's the people I know, I can spend forever talking with and about the people I know. MySpace had a much denser social graph. 
which they needed in the early days, but it was people who had, you know, oh, we're also fans of the same band. It was people just adding each other willy-nilly. Right, so the density of Facebook and the intimacy of it became a strength when MySpace was lack of identity and everybody was sort of following everything. Yeah, and it, it was a, uh, hey, now I very quickly get to the people I care about. And I think there are lots of different reasons, but the core of it is who are the people you care about most. Uh, and they got you there quicker. They got you there very fast. So you realize at some point with namesake, six months in or a year in, that you're tweeting to try to get everybody involved in this. You've been telling and a certain it was, story. It was working decently well, but not as well as, you know, you, you, it's not the skyrocket. It was doing, right. you know, it was growing in a decent clip. Right, and people were coming in there and having a discussion. Oh, here's how to raise money, here's how to do marketing. Yeah. But it was moderate success. Yeah. And, and why is moderate success such a bad thing in your mind? Well, so moderate- I happen to agree. Yeah, it, moderate success, well, first thing, I think most businesses should be lifestyle businesses. Most businesses people start should be, you know, hey, I'm trying to make enough money to pay my way in doing this the world. Website. Right, doing, and that's great. It just happens not to be what we wanted to start. We wanted to start something big enough that tons of people would use it, that it would change the world, the classic venture-backed model. Right. You're swinging for the fences. You need to get millions of people, tens of millions of people to participate and make millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars because you want to change the world. Yeah. And you realized namesake as currently constructed was not going to do that, but there was a learning in there, huh? Oh, huge. In fact, the whole idea is you have to be in market, right? You have to be out there building stuff, interacting with real users, because you can build any sort of world in your head. You can imagine, mm -hmm. people will love this, the, and you have to be out there in reality. You, wait, well, the next step is you simulate by asking people how they're gonna behave, and it's just not the same, because what they say they'll you have do to be is in not the game. what they'll do. You, if, yeah, you you're have to either be creating it. or you're waiting. Yes. And when you get in the game, good things happen, doesn't it? Good, th you know, good things happen, bad things happen, and the whole key is, Every time a good thing happens, you hold on to it. You, 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 so you can build good things. Yeah. Whereas the bad things, you just have to keep getting up. So more bad things may happen than good things, but you can keep accumulating the good things till you get something real. And the good thing that you found was? That people love sharing media, talking about it, oh. and And there was no place to do that, together. was there? There was nowhere to do it together, right? Why not? I mean, shouldn't, why is YouTube or, or Twitter or Facebook not the right place to do this? What, what's fundamentally wrong with those three platforms? So, they're all great platforms, but they're what all. What makes them bad? For but they're they're media. all asynchronous platforms, right? So say that in English. Okay, so they're. I all, don't have a graduate degree. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm actually a high school dropout and a college dropout. And, and but, a millionaire driving a Tesla. So pay attention, people. This kid so, knows what he's doing. Go ahead. Tell me about this asymmetry. So, what happens is some sites you post something, then uh -huh. a lot of people come later and they see it all, but it's not a shared experience because I'm not. Not real time. Yeah, it's not real time. I'm not watching it with you, right? It's one thing if I make a video and I say, I made this video or I like this video, Jason, watch it. I send yeah. you an email and you know, you say, oh, you email me back a few days later. Oh, that's really funny, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you know, a few days later, Tyler does. But right. we might talk about it later, but it's not like we did something together that we mm. really... Uh, There's something deep psychological. It's the same reason why movie theaters still do as well as they do, even though everyone can watch at home if they wanted to. And think about right. the movie theater versus being at home, right? So, you know, you're, this they're, they're peach and grease. I mean, this goes back as old as time. Like, people yeah, just want to watch things together. together. Yeah. We, we as people are a storytelling culture, and it's, it's worth talking about a bit more, but you think about a theater, right? It's worse sort of in every way, right? The picture, you know, that's always out of focus, People are talking, you have to drive there. The germs. Right. It's, yeah. There's germs in that theater. theater, there's bed bugs in the theaters in New York. It's terrible. But it's, uh, you the wanna go out to the theater because the it's with other people. Yeah. And we can't do stuff with other people online and that's, I think, what's just starting here. Ah, so, so it's, it's really that real-time nature of it, watching it together is why Facebook, Twitter are really not the solution here. Yeah, they're great sites, but not for this. Yeah. And, and this really shines here. I'm, I'm pulling up Snoop Dogg's Chill Room. And this is actually Snoop Dogg's Chill Room. You did a deal with Vivo. We did, also, Snoop has come on here and sometimes he'll randomly show up and actually guest VJ uh, wow. on Chill. And so you have this VJ thing, similar to Turntable FM. Was that sort of an inspiration here? Yeah, so we were building, you know, we had all this real-time infrastructure and we saw a Turntable and they really figured out a lot of pieces of interacting in real time. Yeah really well. What we're trying to do is somewhat different. That typically with a 
turntables about music. So what happens is people uh, go, a few people want to DJ, and then uh, a lot of people throw it in the background all day. So someone else is yeah. DJing for me. And they're trying to create sort of the ultimate DJing experience there to make music discovery great. Right. We're trying to create interactive experiences, which leads us in different directions, but they did figure out a lot of key pieces. Right, like and this I think piece we're of the carousel is, yeah. I guess, classic turntable, is people queued up to play it. Um, and how do you get a deal with Snoop Dogg? Uh, so that's, a, that's, so first thing, uh, I'll say I work with an amazing team and an amazing co-founder, and that was all actually my co-founder Brian, who has, Brian's a bulldog, huh? Yeah, he's he had just gets stuff done. He does. How did he get Snoop? And so he's had rela a relationship for years with uh, with Snoop's folks, and while I don't know all the particulars, as I remember it, uh, he helped them out a few years ago just as a, a favor of, you know, oh, you're thinking about how you do all the social media stuff. Yeah. He talked with them, gave them a bunch of advice, helped them out, and wow. then a few years later, we were doing this and, you know, he called them up and said, hey, can we show you what we're up to? And, you know, obviously if someone helps you out, they'll take the meeting, they'll look. They'll only actually do it if you have something that provides real value. You have to, right. you, you have to bring the juice, but... Yeah. If so you do, you give, they'll take the meeting. Uh, Snoop Dogg equity in the company is that the deal? Uh, so I, I don't want to like go into yes. our cap, no, I don't want to go into our cap table, but uh, I do not think I don't think Snoop has equity in the company. The, right, but I mean that is a we are seeing this trend of um, celebrities of uh, either doing angel investing like Justin Timberlake, mm -hmm. uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and of course Ashton Kutcher was a pioneer yeah. in that space. No longer saying pay me. Mm -hmm. but saying, I will invest, this has sort of turned a corner. Oh, it, it's huge because in LA, what we've had, well, to say, we're based in Los Angeles, which right. is a really interesting place to be. And hey, what's it like running a startup here? So, well, I was based in Silicon Valley. That's where we did Nuru. Mm -hmm. uh, we were based in San Francisco. And great place, amazing, amazing technologists. But you notice how a lot of the really interesting startups Right, we're all as certainly the categories were all started outside of Silicon Valley, hmm. right? So you know, Flickr was started in Vancouver, right? That started you know modern photo sharing. Facebook was started in Boston, right? And MySpace LA, uh, MySpace Before in them. LA. Uh, a lot of I had done some work on social software, you know, in, on the East Coast. Foursquare. So double you, click. You have to New York. interact with real people, right? Even the search engine was created in Pittsburgh. And let's face it, right? in the Valley, there's not many real people. There. They're not. I was one of the not. I'm a computer scientist. I'm not a. I mean, you a drive real around that place. It is. I, I, I couldn't. I don't think I could live in the valley. I could probably live in San Francisco, but the valley. I mean, yeah. For the love of God, there's well, like two good restaurants in the whole place. There, there's some good ones, but uh, as a technologist, I love that part of it. Right, you're up there and you're talking about oh, the people who do machine learning algorithms who use support vector right. machines versus. But, the, but, it's, but not, it's not. It's not civilians. It's. And so you need to be interacting with real people and say, will they use it? If you're building products for other technologists, Silicon Valley is a great place to be. Or if there's a category that's proven to exist, right? Ah. So, uh, so you know, web crawler, then Lycos, and then all these companies yeah. built the search engine, right? The search engine wasn't invented in Silicon Valley, but it was perfected and in Silicon Valley. And Groupon, of course, was in Chicago, and Groupon yeah. could, I don't, you would argue Groupon could not have been built in the Valley. No, it's not really a, a Valley company. Right, yeah. So. What's happening, right? And you say, well, each area has different people who are involved with different things. And LA right now is celebrity ego. Is well, not just celebrity. It's media. Plus, so the whole idea of storytelling, which is what LA is good at, it has lots mm -hmm. of people sure. who are screenwriters who know actors, how to engage producers. people, actors, all these different pieces, which you're taking huge advantage of at Mahalo, of right? Of course. You're, uh, that you, sort of content production you're doing. You hire a video editor in LA. I mean, you put out an ad for a video editor in LA, you get like literally 500 people apply for a five or $600 a week job, a $100 a day job. You couldn't do what you're doing in Silicon Valley. If you Valley. do that in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, it'd be $200 a day. And you know, I love Silicon Valley, and if you, there's certain technology that you can only get built yeah. there, but LA has all this storytelling culture, and then there's tech, which has finally gotten good enough yeah. that we can put them together. Absolutely. And in Silicon Valley, because of all the copyright wars, people are still afraid of all that. They're, they're oh, I don't get DRM, oh, I don't want to deal with those, these content companies. Yeah. And you have to be a part of a culture, right? So in LA, I'm talking storytelling, but you know, viewers who are in, any city have things their city is great at, yeah. and you need to be a part of that culture. If you walk in, you know, you fly down, 
we're going to disrupt you. You go into every Hollywood company. Yeah, we're going to disrupt you. And they're, and like, they're like, yeah, oh, talk, yeah the legal department's on the second floor. Yeah, no, you have to be <laughs> building the stuff they floor. want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Hey, when we get back from the break, I want you to tell me about Nuru, the company Absolutely. that was so hot that you sold before it even launched, right? For a, or basically, right, right, as, it, as, it was right as it launched, you sell it for a bunch of money and then it dies. And what was your decision making there to sell out so early and then to watch your baby die and what that was like? But before we do that, that was the teaser, folks. Um, I want to talk about Scott Walker. Scott Walker <laughs> is a good friend of mine. He's not really a good friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. But I love Scott Walker. And he has been supportive of everything I've done as an entrepreneur for years. He comes to every event. He, I see him at every event. He, he supports them. He sponsors it. Whatever he can do. He does sponsor. He sponsors stuff. He will, uh, if I have a, a startup that's looking for help, they're raising money, first-time entrepreneur, he's the first guy to say, hey, come have a cup of coffee with me. Come have a cup of coffee. You know why? He hated working at those big firms so much that he started his own little firm that's now growing pretty nicely, I will say. And it's called Scott Walker Corporate Law. And he gives a flat rate for each thing you do as an entrepreneur. So if you need to get copyrights, trademarks, you need to buy a domain, escrow, angel round, first round, employment, he'll just say, hey, listen, I'll do that for X amount. And I'll have one of my people who's been you know, doing startup law for 10 or 20 years, not least like junior associates who are figuring it out, he'll do it on a flat rate for controlling costs, which when you're an entrepreneur, you need to control. Because I, have you ever gotten surprised by a legal bill? Uh, everyone has. I mean, it's almost, it's almost like every month you open the bill and it's like, you, you ever have that moment where you get the PDF, where you get yeah. the bill and you're just like, what is it going to be this month? $600 or $6,000? Is it going to be $6,000 or $60,000? And of course, you're, you're going to pay your legal bills because that's one of the most important things. You want everything to be airtight. You have started how many companies at this point? Uh, Three, four major ones? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, four. you've raised how many rounds of funding? Three, four? Yeah, five? Thereabouts. You ha you've done a couple of investments. Yes. You have to do this right. You can't uh, that's, skimp on well, legal. Well, well, here's the interesting thing. You, at the end of this whole story, you go to sell your company. Mm. And there's uh, this big due diligence. Work. So yep. they want every legal document oh, you've yes. ever signed. And, and they better, better be, be perfect. perfect or else the whole so, thing can so, get screwed up. So you could be building, if you don't do it right, you could be building this whole company for years, oh. then try and sell it, and yes. you discover that and you don't if, own any of when it. I, let me tell you something. You know this. I've you been through it. And I, I had, in one situation with the company, I had six months of nightmares, and in another one, I had six days and the deal's closed. It could be that easy, depending on how good your lawyer is, and Scott Walker is the best. And you can call Scott at 310-288-6667. 310-288-6667. 310-288-6667. Tyler, what's that phone number? 310. You want me to do it by memory? You're allowed to look at the screen. Look at the screen. Oh, I can look at the screen. 310-288-6667. Now look at me. What's yeah. that number? 310. Yes. 866. No. No. 310. Yeah. 288. 288-6667. Got it. Let's do it again. All right. 310. 286. 288. Tyler, you're ruining the commercial. God, Tyler, you're supposed to add value. Did you get any sleep last night? No. Let me do it one more time for you. 310-288-6667. Thank you, Scott Walker, for supporting the program. Thank you, Scott Water Walker, for supporting Stardust most of all. Call the guy. As I've told you guys, I don't even need to take ads. I did the show for a year or so without any ads. Then we're like, somebody's, people start calling, can we put an ad on the show? I said, you know what, I, I really don't feel comfortable with those ads because I don't, I don't want to have to read a commercial for something I don't believe in. And then I had this brilliant idea, like, well, why don't I make a list of the people who I would like to read commercials for and we'll make a white list. White listed advertising. That's the whole This Weekend Network. None of our hosts will ever read an ad unless they approve it. They have the power to veto. I will never read an ad for something I don't believe in. I stand behind Scott Walker. What a guy. I'm just checking off all the things I love about Scott Walker. I mm. always watch what you're up to, Jason, for sort of the future of content, and particularly content monetization, right? Yes. To say, I'm a tech guy, right? You're a content guy. You get mm -hmm. content better than almost anyone. So the oh, well, idea right. of doing whitelisted advertising, I think is, uh, if, if you're doing it, that tells me something, so. Tells you what? It tells me, I, I think that it's gonna be big. I mm. think it's- See uh, that, Tyler? All this time you've been doubting me, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Dan. All right, Dan. So. We're like a married couple. Um, Dan. <laughs> Nuru. Yep. Everybody was buzzing in 2003, 2000, what, 2004 maybe. 
They're about spies. They're too. about 2004, 2005. New Roo, New Roo, changes everything. Robert Scobel's running around. Oh my God, RSS, Dave Weiner. Those were fun times. Fun times. The, the, that, yeah, that was a game changer. That was Web 2.0. It was like, hey, the, the web is coming back. Web 1.1 is over. 9-11's behind us. The stock market crash is behind us. Uh, hope springs eternal, and you start a company. Yep. Tell us what was that company. So the company was Nuru, and that was actually uh, when Brian and I first started to work together. Yeah. And we were looking at how do we figure out what's important to you? So people have a limited amount of time. They have a limited amount of attention. How do we find the best, most important stuff? Mm. And we wanted to do it across everything. So now you look at all these sort of art smart agents like Siri and that sort of thing that are figuring out what's important at a particular moment. Right. We were trying to say, how do we do that back then? Right. And right around then was when blogs were coming up. Sure. Obviously, you were at the center of that. Yep. When RSS was a big deal, so we said, let's start there. Let's look at this public content. All and, these RSS feeds. Yeah, all these feeds, scrape sites that didn't have feeds, and try and prioritize stuff. So figure out what's the most important stuff to you right. and build customized news sites. Mm. So it... It was a really fun experience building and thinking about all the technology. How do you figure out what's important to someone? Right. How do you deal with all the aggregation? You and I had some conversations sure. back then because you were sure. doing Weblogs Inc. Right, and I was like, hey, don't steal our content yeah, now. You, I remember pay that Pay us well. or else. And, and so you then get an offer from News Corporation. Well, so it, the, let's step back a bit. Yeah. We you know, were a bunch of techies who were getting started in this business. Former PayPal guys. Uh, no. No, where were you guys out of? Uh, we were out of, uh, I had dropped out of school, I had worked for some startups. You were just a kid. I was just a kid, and uh, I, I, we started in Rhode How Island. How old were you then? Uh, 20... Something? 3, 24 or something. So you're 23, 24 years old. Something like that. You got, you, and then you're in the eye of the storm. What were you just, yeah. you were reading blogs and so you did, saw that RSS was, was going to be big? You, neither of you seem to, I, I don't know that this is true, but did you guys get on the phone at one point? At one point, I told him I was absolutely going to destroy But the two of you. Uh, we I'm trying to remember, but he'll remember the story better. Remember it. Who, oh, yeah. who was on the phone? Because it scared me more scared you. You I were on the phone. probably one of a hundred people you had to say stay I, away. I called him and ripped him a new one. So, how, tell, why? Tell the story. was pretty friendly tell, about it. Yeah, so we, I was... Uh, you know, computer science researcher actually for years. My, I love just building products, building technologies that people care about. So I had been working for a while for a computer science research group in Rhode Island, yeah. uh, had built a bunch of early social software, so a lot of predecessors of the sort of, you know, Friendster, mm. MySpace, you know, so building all sorts Wait, of different currencies. What currences. college were you in, in Rhode Island? Uh, Brown. Oh, Brown. Yeah. That's the school I always wanted to go to. Uh, I no, dropped out of it, so, I thought, like, I, but it, had, I loved it. It's great. On the a ton of show. We had a ton of show people, uh, people on the show who went yeah. to Brown. Brown is the place. This is why I wanted to go there. Well, you don't need to pick a major. You build your own major. Yep, absolutely. I want to send my daughter and, to Brown. Uh, hey, can somebody from Brown call me? My daughter's <laughs> going to go to college in 16 years. Do you guys need a computer lab or something? Because I'll write the check. Let's go. They go they have some great labs. So uh, my college roommate was Dana Boyd, who... Uh, oh, you're kidding! Yeah, who wow, did all the social stuff. Yeah. yeah, so she was actually a computer science major. Dana's so brilliant. Yeah. i got to so, have her on the program. I, I, when she talks, I just... I, I have like a total tech nerd crush on her. I just love her so much when she talks. I'm just like, my God, it's so delightful to talk to somebody who is so much smarter yeah. than me about this. You know, it's so delightful when you find somebody- disagreeing about everything, so. I know, but she's so smart, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you- So we were, so, you know, we left school, we were playing around with a bunch of ideas saying, what do we want, right? We were just loved building products and that was still net nuclear winter. After the internet industry had collapsed, no one was funding startups, but we experimented and said, no, this is something valuable. We wanna just build it. So we started yeah. building it and eventually we said, we need to be a part of the whole tech industry network. Sure. We need to be able to raise money and that wasn't gonna happen in Rhode Island. So with the few dollars- uh, Not a big VC th scene there? Uh, not a huge not one. Not so much? Yeah. <laughs> so we took the few dollars we had and we moved out to San Francisco and just sort of bet something good will happen. And we worked hard, we spent a lot of time trying to just meet the people who right. cared about this sort of thing. So we uh, went to all the meetups, it was, this was sure. pre-meetup, but all the events of that sort. Yeah. And I met you at a few of the conferences Special and events. groups, yeah. Yeah. And Lobby crashing, whatever you had to do. That's what we did. Lots. Well, the first uh, 
the day we got to San Francisco, actually, I remember, was when they were having the first Web 2.0 conference. Oh, yes. So this was back when they had this idea that there might be a resurgence yeah, in the web. Yeah, it was only like 300 people at and that event. what I did was I... Was that the Mandarin? What was uh, it Yeah, at? that was at, at uh, uh, the, that Japanese hotel. Yeah, in, yeah, what's it called? It's not, Nico. Yeah, it was Nico. at Nico, not the palace. Yeah, this was, was Nico, this, the like, first little one. So this little tiny three or 400 thing. person thing. And yeah. I said, this is going to clearly be the coming out of of the new web. So I looked through the list of sponsors because they gave all the sponsors tons of passes. Yeah. And I said, who's not in town? So who's not going to use all their passes? Mm -hmm. And I, I emailed each of them and uh, Dick Hart, who was running a company called Skip then, yeah. uh, an identity provider, was coming from Canada and you know I called him and said, hey, I'm just a kid here. Can I take one of your passes? So that's wow, how. Wow, you are a gangster. So that's, awesome. I, I knew that would be sort of your style. And I think yeah. that's where I met you. We pitched you wow. on what we were doing. Right. And you said, don't steal my content. You said right. that, don't, you know, don't run ads Against anywhere our, on that page. Right, because at the time, it was a there very was big issue. There was wars. Everyone in Everybody aggregation was, was figuring like, out who oh, can run what. Well, I had, I had Don Loeb at Yahoo, was created an RSS reader. They were putting it into my Yahoo. So I was delighted. Hey, take our content, put it on Yahoo. But if you do put ads around it, I want half the money, which I thought was reasonable. And they said, well, you know, you have an RSS feed, so we're just taking the RSS feed. I said, I don't care. An RSS feed is ma made for individual use. And so we put into the terms of service, and at the bottom, this is for individual use. And then NewsGator and a bunch of other people started putting ads. And I said, if you don't take the ads off, I am going to put a, I'm going to, number one, I'll build technology to block everybody using your reader and replace the content with this uh, news provider does not respect copyright. Please use these three ones that do. And once I said that, that I'll point people to the other ones, everybody got in line. I said, take the first hundred words. They're like, well, we don't really technically know how to do that. I was like, that's not my problem, you know? Yeah. But that was the issue, right? So and and the, Flipboard the, all, is having the same issue right now, isn't it? There are all sorts of interesting issues around fair use, around copyright, around licensing that yeah. would be a whole different show, and sure. I don't want to refight the RSS wars. No, but, but the RSS, it but, was yeah. an interesting issue. But it was it? A, a huge issue, and ever, that's all people were talking about there for a long time. Yeah, and uh, I basically got, I got Martin Niso from the New York Times, Nick Denton, and myself, all three of us, went to each of the providers, and I see them on the emails, and I said, listen, you can take our stuff if you take an abstract. And mm -hmm. it, that was the first time anybody had ever heard of taking an abstract for news feeds. And I just said, take 100 words and link to us. And that's what seems to happen in all these worlds, yeah, right? People, right? People come up with a compromise that hopefully yeah. works for everyone. I call it the fair and fair use. Be fair. Yeah. So you, you create this news aggregation service, a flipboard before there was flipboard, a flipboard before there was an iPad. And it was incredibly innovative. And... So, it gets bought. Well, so what happens is we were going out to raise money, and we, you know, we met this person, introduced us to that person. Eventually, uh, we meet with uh, Rajiv Moani, who uh, says, "Wow, this technology is great." Rajiv was uh, unfortunately Larry passed, Sir, away, but passed he was away. Larry and Sergey's, Larry Sergey's uh, thesis advisor. Thesis advisor. And he said, "I'm too involved with incredible Al support of Angel. Great guy." Yeah, he actually yeah, said, "I'm sorry. too involved with." Uh, stuff at Google that may relate to this, but I want to see you guys succeed. He introduced us to Ron Conway. Wow. And Ron said to us, uh, he said, wow, this, you know, Rajiv says the technology is good. Um, how do you want to, uh, how do you want to get users? And this was right, uh, I think the day after news had bought MySpace. Mm. And we were, uh, we had been spending a lot of time saying, how do we get enough users? How do we get enough traction? How do right. we learn what people's interest? Distribution and also, how do you get enough data to personalize sure. news to say where people told everyone their interests? And right then it was MySpace. So we said, well, the company, we even though we were more sort of you know a sophisticated professional thing, we said the company we really want to meet with is uh, is MySpace. And he right. said- they were the big, they were the Facebook of the time. Yeah, and so- Hard meeting to get. Hard meeting to get. And Ross Levinson was in hot demand so Ron said, I'm having breakfast with Ross Levinson tomorrow at the Hyatt Airport. You have five minutes to pitch him at the beginning of wow. my breakfast. Ross, of course, is now at Yahoo. Ross is now uh, running. running pretty, you know, in this interim, and hopefully they choose him as CEO because he's a great guy. He'd be a great choice. I think he would be a perfect choice as CEO. Uh, and he, was, he had just bought MySpace. He had just bought IGN. And... We give him a demo and he said, let's talk about this. We said, we want to do a deal to integrate it. And over time, we then had months of conversations. Whenever you're trying to do a deal with a big company, it's months and months of conversations figuring out how you might integrate, how a deal might work. And finally, 
we said, we got to a point where he said, this will be a major part of the site if we do it, at least the technology, because we'll get into yeah. that in a second. The technology will be big for us, but we can't have a major part of our site run, basically run by a little startup. That's uh, like the sure, IBM sure. Microsoft deal. That's yeah, yeah. you know dumb for us. So he said, so we're not gonna, so you know, first he says, well, we're not gonna do a deal, mm -hmm. right? And he says, but what if we buy you? So that was, that, Ten million bucks? Uh, Fifteen million, something like that. Not quite that high, but oh. uh, it was uh, nine. Close, yeah, nine yeah, million dollars. So. so you just two kids, you get a nine million dollar offer, and you got to work there for a couple of years, and you go yeah. work there, and you had a great experience. But it, did the product ever see the light of day? So what happened was, when we sat down and worked with them for a mm. bit, we learned a few things. One of which is just MySpace had a very clear mm. tech roadmap, and right. integrating would take a long time. The other thing is. You know, your goal is to make things good for the acquirer, right? You want yeah. to just create value in the world. Generally speaking, if you get bought, it's the classy thing to do yeah. to make your and the buyer want, look smart. Not everybody does that. Yeah, so I'm we wanted to make them name. look smart. And to be honest, sitting down with all of what they had, we realized this product wasn't what they needed. Uh -oh. They had this. They had a much much bigger problem, which is they had all this traffic on MySpace. They couldn't monetize it. We had an engine that, given that would go through people's MySpace profiles figure out what they were interested in, match things with them. Well, mm. instead of matching content, what would you match, Jason? Mm. Mm. People together? No. No, what? Had Advertising? Uh, Advertising. <laughs> yeah. So we helped uh, create a division there, Fan, which was their ah, ad network side. Yes, yes, yes. And we're using our, more our knowledge, not so much the code, right. but a lot of our knowledge we had gained to mm. build that, to build all the backend targeting of their ad network, which mm. made them far, far more money than they would have ever made if they had just yeah. done new rules. So, so they any used regrets? Us. I mean, you know, I think I'm not a big company person. I, I, it's not my nature. I'm glad we did it. I'm glad we learned. I loved a well, lot of. We never have to work again. Yeah, you and Brian are set people. for life. So you're. you're we big, like working though. Why? Well, no, I know that, yeah. but it does. I mean, describe the moment in which the wire transfer goes. Okay, through. so here it is. Where are you? So we. So the final bit of the deal, it took them months and months to do because they were doing big this company. big, big, you know, big company, big deal. We yeah. were totally out of money. Heather Hardy is and there. Heather Hardy, we well, I'll get to Heather Hardy yeah. in a second. So Heather, well, so we finally we've totally run out of money. It's taking so many months. They're like, we don't know if they're going to do it. We're just going to close this angel round. So it, we said, fine, you know, we're we we're moving on, yeah. and it would have driven the price to a different point that they couldn't have done it. So we, you know, warned our angels, hey, you know, we were trying to get an acquisition done before we go, but you know, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I figured, let's throw a hail mary. So what I had picked up at some point during this was Ross Levinson's cell phone number, mm. and so we decided we're closing Wilson Sonsini offices Monday morning, right? So you know, we're going to. Uh, we're closing the angel around 9 a.m. Biggest law firm in the valley. So I call up Ross Levinson. I say, "Hey, look, you know, we we would have loved to do a deal, but uh, we just are, you know, I legitimately have, I think, a hundred, you know, I think it was fifty dollars left, and that was every month. I was like, can we do a little contract programming for a friend to to Keep earn enough money to on. pay the rent, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, legitimately, out on the street. And so what we did was call him up and said. We, you know, hey, any chance you still want to do this? If so, you can act now. And said, well, yeah, I, we actually really want to do this. And said, I said, okay, we will fly down there. You know, we're in San Francisco. I'll be in LA in three hours if you want to have a meeting. And he said, well, we actually can't tonight because they were doing what now, you know, secret deal. But now that was the big Google ad deal for oh, 900 wow. million with them. Yeah. So finally, it comes down to we fly down there Sunday night. Remember, we have to be back. Monday morning yeah. for the closing. Nowadays, everything's just PDF sent on the yeah. internet. But back then, you used to sign you have, you have signing room, you sign document documents room and, and, and all yeah. that. Yeah. So it's Sunday night. We're sitting at the Fairmont Hotel, uh, right in Santa Monica, so right near where you are, yeah. and uh, with Ross and Heather Hardy, and we just sit around a table and get to a, a handshake agreement. Wow. So that's how the sale happened. And, and then the wire transfer comes the, in. Oh, the wire transfer. So finally. We, uh, we, well, it's not even the wire transfer. Let's say the handshake agreement. Right. I actually don't have enough money to fly back to San Francisco. I had spent the last of my money 
Uh, <laughs> uh, so now you got to take the bus back and so, well, hitch a ride? So as a matter of pride, I had never called my parents and asked for money. And I called my parents and Can said, I, get I said, I need you to Western Union need yeah. me, yeah, You're like a hundred dollars, but I'll never ask you for money again. That was, <laughs> that was the, uh, that, that's exactly what I said to them on the phone. Yeah. And then, uh, we sort of had nowhere to go till then. So we, uh, with we celebrated at the Terminal One LAX McDonald's because wow. that's the leftover money we had. It was enough for uh, some chicken McNuggets. Wow, so you go in there, you have the chicken nuggets, and then whatever, two or three weeks later, yeah. the wire transfer comes Firms into your bank account, and then, to the corporate account. Uh, no, it's to... Uh, they bought your share of they, they do a share, yeah, share sale, so come, you know, there's a wire distribution, so they make a list, and everyone gets wired the appropriate amounts. To and the, so you're sitting there, and you know today's wire day. Yeah, so sitting in your there. house, in the office, but then, uh, wait, you skip the part, which is now that you've done that, do you, you're going back and telling the angel, the, the, the angel round folks. Sorry, you know, we right. had warned them. It yeah. would have been actually some really good folks, you know, Ron Conway, Steve Blank. Yeah. Um, and best of the best. So we, you know, get get the wire and we decide let's make this really good for five. You know, let's prove that we're what they bought. So let's. So we basically said, let's be down, let's have moved to LA, call a moving truck, right? Uh, we will be down in LA tomorrow and starting work. Wow. So, so wh where are you when the wire transfer goes through? You're in your office? Uh, I... You're logged into Bank of America? America? You know, all the bank sites didn't update that fast even a ah. few years ago. So, so what I do think, you do? You go to your so, bank? So finally, you know, once they say the wire is supposed to clear at this time, I go to the, the bank and just confirm it because they want You walk a into a, to the uh, thing and they said, you have too much money in your checking account. You should, you, you know, you should really open a savings account. account and so. so what did you do? You just walk up to the teller and you're saying, what's my balance? Yeah, I said, can you give me a printed copy of my balance? And what does she do? She just like looks up at you like... I think in San Francisco there are a lot of weird people, you know. Uh, I, and she sees a couple million dollars yeah, and, and she's just like, all good. Yeah, that's, they, that's I don't the think norm. they flinch. That's wow. sort of. Well, congratulations on no, that. Thanks. Uh, question from Israel in the chat. What's your best advice for young computer science entrepreneurs? Ah, uh, so. Good question. Yeah, that's a good question. I think the first thing is to have a very good general view of look at everything, play with everything, uh, have experimented with everything. Uh, then learn the the customer development side of it, which is to say the business side, right? The mechanics of legal agreements, the mechanics of, that's easy, right? The learning to find needs, to talk to people, to say there's someone who needs something that's missing, that's yeah. the really hard thing that a lot of computer scientists are really bad at. Yeah. And I, th I think if you learn both sides of that, or if not, partner with people. You know, we have, I work with Brian, and I work with an amazing team, and a lot of the things like moving to chill were led by our team, far more than me or Brian. What about these incubators? When you started, there was no Y Combinator, right? Yeah. What, what would you, at that time, you would have joined one of those, wouldn't you? Have you? Probably so, you know, to say we had to hustle to be connected with that whole world. The fact that they provide that almost as a service. Plug and play. It's plug automatically. And play. Is that time, good or bad? I don't know. You know, I'm. Uh, well, there's, You're old school? I'm old school in that I went through it and, you know, Everybody almost. Else that, that made. Not that everyone else should suffer. I think that made us tough enough to be able to go out, right? Uh, it's the VCs, right? Why it is kind of easy now. You get accepted to one of these, these things. And maybe that helps certain things happen. Right, but then you get us. a quarter million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars in instant free funding just by being accepted. Is that fair? I don't, there's no a such thing, thing as fair and unfair in this. It, Could it be bad for entrepreneurship? Could it be bad for startups? Is it gonna create too many weak companies who haven't had to struggle to fight? I think, there's a degree to which it does. There are also some some diamonds in the rough it finds. Everything is a good and bad. Yeah. I like that we learned how to to tough just it out. tough it out to fight for a deal. To, to get the chicken nuggets, to have to wire transfer money. Yeah. It is a little bit easy at the beginning, but they do get ramped up with so much knowledge. I mean, net net, nobody yeah. could argue that net, Y Combinator net, and tech stars are not amazing and awesome. Yeah, but they're it, amazing. So. I do believe that it's making it a little too easy for some folks because I have met some entrepreneurs who come out of the programs who they just, there's a, I don't want to say there's a sense of entitlement, but there is a little bit of, well, it should just all go well, easy for well, me. Well, you know, I want, I want it all to, like, I want to see every entrepreneur in the world succeed, any, right? It's any the successful most fun guy does. Yeah. And you just say, it would be great if there were 10 times as many startups. So I want to see a model that lets that happen, right? right. The, my only worry is that the, the real world turns out to be a lot harder than I ever anticipated. So it Here's might be good, question. it might be bad. I see both sides of that one. Um, here's another question from Doc. 
Should you take LSD like Tyler and Steve Jobs? No, he didn't ask that. Um, last episode. I, I was watching. Dan, watching I was oh, hanging yeah, out yeah. with Tyler and Dan Martell oh. this weekend, and okay. then I got an announcement. Uh, question from Doc. What's the best way to get initial funding like early angel investing? What's the best way to get angel funding in your mind? Hmm. To, get, to get angel funding, I think it's two things. One of which is nowadays it's so cheap to build a product. Build a product hmm. and then not just build it and go and show it. Find someone who will say, I love this. Right? If I can walk in and you know Tyler says, I need this, this is just a great product, that VC, that other person is going to say, or that angel. Come say, in with somebody who loves it. Yeah, and if you have that, you can now go on angel list. You can say, here's the evidence. Social proof, they call it. Yeah, social proof. That, and the social proof doesn't have to be other angel And that angel didn't investors. exist when you started. There was social proof. You just you had to no, do it. No, social proof was I had an idea it. that people would listen to and thought was credible. Yeah, I mean, we hit out and wrote code. You know, right. I, I so knew there was, it was a lot of show. my code. Yeah. We had something to show. Now, I w we didn't have all the money for nice data. You know, back then you had to have uh, server farms and whatnot. So I remember um, carrying my computer to Ron Conway's house. Right, that's how your tower. You, my tower. Do you, you remember all right. our like Pentium towers? Right. I no EC2 back then. Yeah, there was no EC2. You know, so you, you had could, to fire up a SQL server in his house. We didn't have the money to get it in a data center, so I wanted to show it. So we, you know, wow. wa walked across San Francisco. I remember Jesus. walking across San Francisco great, with the computer. What a great guest you've been so far. So. Hey, let's play uh, guess the fake startup. Go ahead, Kieran. Let's hear all this. Right. Kieran Kelly so, is here. You guys know how to play the game. We know how to play the game, but let's hear the rules I one more time. I know how to play the game. I know how to play the game. <laughs> Obviously, Tyler. You know Tyler knows how. <laughs> Dan he wins how. it every time. You know how to play the game? So I'm going to read you three descriptions, one of which is fake, and you guys have to decide which one is not the real startup. Guess the fake startup. We got yeah. it. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, the first one is theblock.com. Mm -hmm. A new, better way to Don't buy... Look at the, hey, close the chat room, because I can see Tyler looking at it. Okay, I'm closing close this computer. Close the chat room. Thank you. Anybody, anybody caught Tyler, cheating is Tyler loves disqualified. Cheat. <laughs> Cheated the last three weeks in a row. I, okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so theblock.com, a new better way to buy and sell in online auctions. Theblock.com lets you search on a worldwide or strictly local basis for items to bid on. If you win, you can cho choose to have them shipped to you or use our premium service to have them delivered in person same day. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Theblock.com. Theblock.com. A better okay. way to buy and sell in online auctions. Okay. Okay. The next one is SyncUp.com. That's S Y N K U P. SyncUp <laughs> is a free like personal scheduling assistant that accesses your email, calendar, and contacts to coordinate meetings and events, then push reminders to you about your schedule. Okay. Okay. That's the second one. SyncUp. Third one is eFuneral.com. E-Funeral brings the death care market into the 21st century by allowing families to initiate and manage funeral planning online. <laughs> families can get quotes, read user reviews, and get planning advice for free from the comfort and privacy of home. Okay. All right. So we have theblock.com, a new and better way, uh, a new better way to buy and sell online auctions. We have SyncUp, S-Y-N-K-U-P.com. SyncUp is free personal scheduling assistant that accesses your email calendar and contacts, coordinate meetings and events, and pushes reminders to you. And we have eFuneral, mm. bringing death care markets in the 21st century by allowing families to initiate and manage funeral planning online. Hmm. And everybody's got to write, you got to write, you gotta write it down, Tyler. I'm writing down which one. I know the answer to this. Okay. Okay, Tyler, you write down the answer for yours. Don't look at his answer. And da, 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 ba, ba, da, 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 the block.com is like Cosmo Plus, Craigslist, and Sync Up is like a bad version of Siri. Then there's your funeral, which is like a SaaS based way to bury your loved ones. It's pretty morbid and it's got a really web 1.0 name. eFuneral.com, SyncUp.com, and TheBlock.com. Okay, you are our guest. You go first. Which is the fake startup game? Mm. So I'm gonna say I think the funeral one is real because that that you certainly you say the funeral's real. I'm going with the funeral's real. Okay. Why? Uh, if you've ever been around a funeral, it's last you know last minute. It's painful. That's yep. a lot of money is spent. People are in high stress. Yep. That I I see a real need for. Yeah. Right. It's funny to think about, but it is practical, is what you're saying. Yeah. I, I so. you know. 
Yeah. So Sadly, we all have to deal with this at some point. Right? So okay. I'm going to go with that as a real one. Okay. So, then the so now you're down is, to down down to two. So the block and sink. Yeah, the block. I didn't quite understand the pitch. I'll say it sounded like auctions, but Ritz. So I, I was a little confused by that one. Uh huh. Uh, maybe there's a real business, but who knows. I've seen lots of calendar syncing and lots of schedule syncing, yep. so I'm going to say the block is the fake. You're saying about, what do you say, Tyler? Let's see, let's see. I want the written evidence because I don't want him influencing you. <laughs> I had the block is fake. All right, I had the block is fake as well, which you can see right. Uh, and I was going to say this there. is the, by what does far it say the, right there? The, the block. Yeah. Okay, so we all say the block. We'll take me through your thinking. Why a funeral? No, I'm not going through my thinking because then you no, you, no, no, you no, try no, to no. use my That's, thinking. I'll kick you off the show if you don't. <laughs> You have to break it. That's it. Doc can is I, if you Doc is off, can I be the new Tyler? Absolutely. You brought it this week. You could absolutely be the new Tyler. <laughs> Tyler, you're, you could be replaced. And Karen's also waiting in the wings. Well, let's hear your thinking. <coughs> I will do my thinking first. Okay. E-funeral is... Um, it's got to be real. Um, and <clears throat> I think it's... I think that's the red herring. That's the, that's the head fake to try to get you to think it's fake, but it's not. I think Sync Up is so terrible as a name and so confounding that it must be true. And the block is such a clean, organized, well thought out domain name. And the business is a little bit convoluted. So it feels fake to me because it's it's a value proposition that feels a little bit forced. Like it's not quite enough, but it's something. So like getting it delivered same day and um, this search on a worldwide or strictly local basis for items to bid on, like that's like a really goofy way to describe the internet. You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. like you, you just search for things. I mean, is it a worldwide or is it global? I mean, who cares? You know, like when people you start using words like global and all that kind of stuff, it's like something's fishy in my mind. The global is the word that made me think it's fake. What was your thinking, Tyler? Um, the block as a domain name um, is probably not available to somebody who has that bad of a description. That's okay, very good. And now, about E-Funeral, why E-Funeral? E-Funeral, yeah. <clears throat> kind of clever name. I feel like I've been pitched on E-Funeral. I feel like I... Well, you know, like uh, Randy Comistar's I've books, he always been... has the, the funeral business in them. I don't know if you've seen... No. Uh, really? I think it's in Monk and the Riddle, which was ah. a great book by Randy. Yeah. So. I mean, if it's... N Part of me thinks she may have... I think I'm going to give Carolyn some credit here. I actually think E Funeral might be the fake one, hmm. and she picked. Oh, so now you're no, I'm you're hedging. No, no, hedging no. now. No, but you want to play for money? No, no. We all pick the same thing. We can't play for money. And but uh, I'm curious to see if she has her game has gotten to that point because hmm. I think she's pivoted her technique in accordance. So with now you're how getting into these. Carolyn's technique. Yes. All right, yeah. all right. Let's hear it. And the fake startup is the block. We all got Boom. it, Carolyn. Okay. Did Carolyn do this or was it Sam? Carolyn wrote them. Carolyn wrote that, huh? Carolyn, wow. Carolyn says, damn it, 12 <laughs> exclamation points. Wow. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, and now we have a chart of the week. Is there a chart of the week or something we're doing? I have not seen a chart. Chart of the week for November 8th. Let's, I don't even. If you don't have one, I'll just show chill for a few more. Exactly. Uh, so the, uh, more about how awesome the, the way chart of the week works is we don't know what's going to be shown and we get shown something we react to it so we're looking at aol us access subscribers in millions at the end of q3 there are still three million or so people it looks like who are using aol dial-up and i sold my company to them in i think 2005 when there were 20 million and i remember wow it went down by five it went by 25 percent and that was miserable because five million people a month times twenty dollars is a hundred million dollars a month that's a billion dollars they lost between 05 and 06. And then between 06 and 07, it also went down a billion dollars a year. And then it's sort of, it's actually the decline is going down in terms of full numbers because it's almost to zero. Um, in 09, they had as much as five, just over five million, then to four, and now to three. Is that three, the total amount? Three point something? I you can't tell from the chart. No. Um, okay, the fact that three million people are still using it means that half of them are paying for their email addresses and don't know how to turn it off and don't want to, they haven't figured that out, that they can forward their email or... Or they live in places where they can't get high speed. I mean, there's still some places like that in the country. There are some. There's very few though, right? Yeah. Is rural it enough areas. for three million? Rural areas. The rural areas, still three million of them? Backup I don't know. Plan. I don't buy it. Backup plan on the road? But on the road, you use Wi-Fi. It's hard to believe, but... Um, some of them think they need it for their email address. 
I think that's what it is. People are paying $250 a year for an email address. And that's a lot of money when you, you multiply that out. That's I meant uh, Over five years, $1,200. Over 10 years, it's $2,500. Yeah. Well, I was talking the total, 3 million times that 250 Yeah, I mean, people don't realize what a juggernaut AOL was. It peaked out at $35 million, I believe, and it was $25 a month back then, and that means they were making a billion a month. Yeah. And that's still a lot of cash coming in that lets them do... Uh, all kinds of movie phone acquisition, ICQ acquisition, all these pieces that they subsequently wound up selling off. They just... They were throwing off tons of money, bought Weblogs Inc., bought Huffington Post with all that money. So what would, what would you do if you were uh, running AOL? What, what would you be buying? Well, I wouldn't, you know, see this is the thing. I, people who can't build buy. Mm-hmm. I'm a builder. I wouldn't be buying. I would be building. Well, when, when you were at AOL, what were you, were you sitting there like, let's build this, let's build this? Yes. Yes, I mean, I took Net, they gave me Netscape and I made it into a better version of Dig that was more curated. And you know what? It was going like they had that same chart from 10 million people down to five. Then we redid it and it flattened out. And I was like, okay, well, now we're not losing anybody. Now we can build on this. And all these Republicans, it was a Republican version of Dig. All these Republicans and middle Americans who had Netscape and had Netscape dial accounts, because there were dial up accounts for Netscape back then. Um, were loving discussing politics. And George Bush was in office and they loved it. They, there was three or 400 comments per item and people were voting stuff up and down. It was a better version of Dig in my mind because I had 25 full-time people picking what was on the homepage and curating it. Well, I'm sorry, we had yeah. 25 people we were paying $1,000 a month to each, not full-time, but their job was for a couple of hours a day to monitor it. We called them scouts and we had these scouts and they were looked different than other people. So imagine if Dig had a curation level on which was basically oh, tech that, me. That's when I was saying that I love watching how you think about content, yeah. watching how you thought about dis- both in Weblogs Inc, how yeah. you would You'd be running everything off of IM, and you'd be yeah. PayPaling thousands right. of people. Into, yeah. I, I studied what you did, mm-hmm. right, to say, oh, how do you atomize content creation like that? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, that was our big innovation. We had 500 people getting paid. At, when we sold the company, we were paying $5 a blog post. And then when we flipped over, I said, let's make it 10 because AOL can afford it, and it's not going to change the economics that much. It's, a, it's like a million dollars more a year if we do whatever number of posts. So screw it. Let's just do... $10 a post is a nice even number. Um, and actually we let the bloggers own their content. So we had a five year exclusive yeah. for the content. They owned it forever and after, and they could use it after we had an online exclusive for two years. So we had it online for two years and in perpetuity non-exclusively. So okay, they could take all of their blog posts and then go write a book or go write a magazine article and they owned it, which also reduced our liability and all this kind of stuff. So it was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, this is why Ross might be a good guy for the job there because I think Ross relates well You're to product. You're saying Ross at AOL? Or, no, or Ross, Ross at Yahoo. Yahoo. Because Yahoo and AOL both have the same problems, which is how does a big company like that with all those big revenue streams nurture content, people creating little things? So Chill or Weblogs Inc. or whatever it is inside of one of those big companies. How do you nurture those people to keep innovating and build stuff when, as Ted Leonsis from AOL explained it to me, we have this big machine over here that spits out $100 bills all day. And you have this little machine that you know, every week spits out a quarter. Yep. And everybody is gonna be naturally looking at the big machine and all the money that just comes out of it with, and wheelbarrows are coming out. And then you're gonna have to try to explain to people that your little machine that pops out one quarter a week could become that machine. Yeah, and to be honest, that's what happened. You know, you kept Weblogs Inc. going while you built other properties like Netscape. What we did at News was to say, yeah, let's just figure out how to use our knowledge to to make the machine, make the better. machine better. Right, exactly. And it's an interesting acquisition strategy that I think Ross was actually smart about, but not a lot of companies get how to do well. I, what you have to do is you have to be able to celebrate product for the innovation and the quality of the product, not necessarily its performance to things that have existed and become breakout outlier success. Microsoft, of all people, has done a great job of this. Mm-hmm. Right? They nurtured Xbox, Bing and um, what was it? The Zune. All three amazing products. So, though, notice, and Windows 8. D- great you know, product. Uh, Jeremy Aller, you know, all, a lot of the key people there, Gary Flake, are now doing their own startups. So it'll, you can't keep, you, can't yeah. keep uh, you know, those kind of folks forever. Yeah. But they Microsoft's did it enough. Microsoft's a very complicated place to do that. But somebody in Microsoft, I guess you got to give Bomber some credit, was oh, able absolutely. to say, here is a building, put Xbox in it, here's a building put Zune in it, here's a building, put Bing in it, and protect them from the Office, Microsoft Windows franchises, and the comparison to them. Yep. 
And they've been able to do that, and now Bing is actually, I been I put Bing as my default search engine on my iPad because I like to watch it. Yeah. I'm actually it's enjoying really Bing good. more than Google. And I never thought I'd say that. Now, it's not five times better, like you were saying yeah, before. Yeah, that's the problem. But it feels like it's 15% better. And 15, 20% better in some searches, maybe they got a shot. I think it's a, they have a shot. Well, so it's interesting. It's a lot better at the head queries, I think. Yes. Google is better at the tail queries, in I my opinion. I agree with that. How, and, did you, how do we both know that? Uh, it's just a feel, because when you're, yeah. Google, I think, is a bunch of engineers who you know spend all day thinking about. It feels like how, they get the sniper. They get the, the things that they yeah. care about, which, yeah. you know, as a technologist, I'm always looking up this weird API for some software, and Google tends to be better at that. Right. Uh, Bing, I, I do like the experience Image of search, course. video, video search. search. Well, here's the, better. I had always thought that for the fir- a previous iteration of Mahalo, so for the first iteration where it was curated things, Human that search, Bing would have bought Mahalo to say, we're going to curate the top. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but I did talk to Microsoft a hundred times. I didn't want to sell because okay. I wanted that to figure it out. Why. Yeah. But yeah. I would have, yeah, if I were Microsoft, I would have I, I still said, feel like I should go back and top. do search again. I think I'm going to. After this current iteration, I think that human curated search is still going to solve the problem. I just think I was too early. I, I think it can solve pieces of the problem, but yes. it's hard to get pe- I think the problem, if you're Mahalo, is okay, now I have this extra mental cost of do I decide to go to the head, or if I'm old Mahalo, right? Yeah. I, do I decide to go to Mahalo for this type of query and to Bing or Google for this type right, of query? Right, we couldn't get people to switch. And that's. that's we could get, we could SEO better than anybody. We came the 140th largest site in the United States, 50 million weeks, but we couldn't get people to switch. Yeah, and, and it was exactly what you're saying. It wasn't five times better, it was 10% better or 20% better on the best, on the top searches, and then 100 times worse on the Tail searches. searches, and I don't believe in building a company for flipping, right? I don't believe in yeah. building it for the acquisition. But to me, when I saw you announce that, when I saw you first launch it, I said, "That is built for acquisition by one of these big yeah. engines because it, it's." You I'm know, still, I'm still very torn by the whole thing. You know, yeah. like my original thing was to get people to information they can trust. That mm-hmm. was the original tagline: helping people find information they can trust. Uh, and I think sort of where we pivoted to, in a way, in the same way you learn something with you know mm-hmm. namesake which was the video is the object giving people the answer from an expert and we tried it with answers and it answers doesn't really work and core doesn't really work what really works is just anointing somebody an expert and agreeing they're an expert and then letting them teach mm-hmm. in a video with an article and just picking the best one in each vertical it's sort of like getting the destination yeah. is better than so then the question is, okay, but in search, you said you might want to go back to search in a few years. How do you get how do you get to ten times better in search? You know, search is pretty good. I don't good. know, I don't know. That's I think the hard somebody's part. gonna solve mobile. I believe it's I think it's gonna be mobile and video are gonna be the two places where you'll see and personalization are a lot of events. But I don't you know, with with Google and Bing being the two players in there with so much resources that any innovation they can iterate on. So one of the things we iterated on was putting pictures of people who liked certain pages in the search results. Yeah. And a couple of other people had tried that too. And now it's in Google, Google. Search yeah. two years after, three years after I predicted it. Or actually built it. Yeah. So you can't, you it, know, some of these big companies, you can't. It's hard to have a sustainable win in that world. And I, I, to be honest, when starting a company, it's interesting. I think we have different, different personalities about a few different things. Yeah. One of which is how, how we fund things. But another, because we were talking about that earlier today. Yeah. But another thing that I think is, I like to look for a sort of, hey, here's some future technology that's in a weird corner that, that you know, is uh, people aren't looking at. I think you like to go head on after search, right? Say, yeah. There's an established market. I'm going to go in there and beat some people yeah, up. Yeah, innovate it. I mean, I, it's sort of, I, I like the disruptive, you know, B, BDC, I call it, big dumb company. You find the big dumb company and what problem they're solving, you solve it better and disintermediate them. I mean, blogging, web blogs, yeah. was a better version of magazines and newspaper. Newspapers, so it was like you, you knew what the previous product were was, so you could benchmark against it. Foursquare, yeah, there is no previous product. Check in is a completely new category. So, yeah, I do agree. Yeah, and you like to fund companies yourself? Are you crazy? So you personally funded Namesake? So Bri- Brian and I said this is what we you know nowadays it, we have angel money, but uh, we said we want to build this, we want to experiment, we want to learn, and you know we had a group of people we want to work with, yeah. and we said let's. Let's build this, right? Let's. So you both put up 
couple of hundred grand yourself yeah, and you put, put it in a, a bank for account? A, a decent chunk of our net worth to say, you know, we have the people what who want to work What are you crazy? That's your nest egg. Don't ever do that again. That's why you angel know, investors exist to take that risk, not you. I, you know, I'd rather own own my company fully. I'd rather control my destiny for that first little bit. And I believe in grow slow, you know, right. build the product. Then once you have something nice, then you, you get the outside investors. And yeah, but, but I know that's not a problem. You have such a great network of people who would, Ron Conway or Mark Andreessen or whoever would back you and just say, here's a half a million dollars, go experiment on your idea. You've earned that. Why wouldn't you take advantage of it? I I've don't also understand. earned the ability to go and just say, I want to experiment on this. So it's, mm. it's it, yeah. But you're experimenting with so why your should nest I, egg. So your argument for why you one earned that nest egg, it, you should protect it at all costs. That's what Mark Cuban told me. Hmm. He said, take that nest egg, always protect it so that you're free to experiment with other yes. people's money and that stuff, and you've earned that right. Yes, yeah, so I'll say the. If the I, angel investors I like didn't want to give yeah. it to you, I would say yes, but the angel investors want you to do that early on. Uh, so that's true. I I think, hey, I want to experiment sort of starting out the way the way I want, and I'm in it because I just like building hungrier? these products. Does it make you hungry? Is it, is it a does. mind F for yourself? I, I think it is. You know, ah, to say, I see what it is. is you got to, you know what I mean? No, I don't I've, think that's I've, the main I've, reason, though. I think that that's, that's, it, that's true, but yeah. it's not the main reason. I think the main reason is to say, hey, I just love building products, and whatever the, the path that's the least other, you know, the, the least, like, investor, no, it's, you know, me, you know what? The, I the put, team I work with, and I put a hundred. I put a hundred thousand to this weekend and two hundred fifty into launch. So okay, so I, but I did that alongside Angels, so every dollar I put in was probably matched yeah, two, two or three to one. So, but that was just because if I don't put anything in, it looks like I'm. But Mahalo, I didn't put anything myself in personal. Hmm. So anyway, I'm sort of between the two. I like to have a little skin in the game. I guess it makes me take it more seriously. I think. Yeah, I, I like you that. You can't help but not. That also gives you a little credibility. Yeah, well, certainly, I think you, if you have the means to, you should put in something because that that demonstrates seriousness to investors. Yeah, it does. Hmm. Tell how much you put in. Into what? Squeal. It's all mine. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Put fifty dimes in yourself. Um, no, I put. I I actually wrote exactly forty. I, I put in a bunch, and then I was like, well, I need to start. Significant. I need to put in a bank account and like throw it all in. And it was basically... You didn't let any of these angels put money into Squeal. No. And I'll say... I would have given it. I, you've said many times. Like, when are you going to take my money? Many, many killer angels did. You're a dope. You've got to take that money, Tyler. No. You need They'll, to take that money. I'll take, take it. I'll take the acquisition money. All right. All right. All right. Hey, you want to bake the pie? You want to you wanna pick the apple? I, I, feel, I feel like he does. It's like, it. it's a clear conscious, and you go, and you work on it, and it's... You're, you very much feel like it's your own thing, and you, right, you here's do a need good, to get the outside. Here's a, here's a serious, sure, legitimate question from executive when you producer get that Margaret. Killer point, yeah. Executive producer Margaret asks, "What is Chill's revenue plan?" So, first thing, I don't want to reveal too much about the the future. Do you have a plan right now, or is it just build and let's see what happens? So we've talked a lot about it, and there are a few clear things that will make sense that I don't want to get in. But right now, we're really focused on user experience. Just mm -hmm. saying, we want to make Chill the place to go to interact around video, the place to go around interacting around media. And, and what our sense is, is you know, we've been in the monetization industry. Yeah. If you have a passionate audience around that sort of thing, the monetization is... is right. uh, and you have it right here. Look, I, I, you guys built a, a little banner here, here for us that says, Nell, Chim, Carbonite, Hiscox, go to media. We got to update that with uh, Scott Walker. We did this one because we love you, but yeah, right. I mean, other you, people I, might The be. idea would be, I guess, if I want to customize my room, I pay $99 a month software as a service or something. That would work. Well, that would work. Metrics, we, maybe I have the ability to charge people to be in the room. Yeah, certainly Virtual if they're goods. pay per view events, you could imagine that sort of thing. Well, Ustream happening. is already doing that. So, I mean, right now you syndicate Ustream. Do you think that you need to have Ustream as part of your default package? So, so we have talked a lot with Ustream. They're great folks. They build sure. a great product and we've worked with, with them. Them. So, and I imagine, yeah, you have to be uh, good friends with them. You know, yeah, they we'll, feature us. Yeah, so we we both love what they're doing, and you know, we'll. we'll but are over you time on a collision how, course? Yes, or no? I don't think so. We right are now. Are you going their to launch your own streaming service? I'll never say never, but uh, it, at least you know we we just talk to customers and build the next thing, and it's certainly not on the you know things customers are asking us for today. They're not asking you for that. They feel like Ustream and Justin and all these other things today, that you're in bad are fun. As we evolve, they may you know what well, all we do is talk to them. Why would you take the bandwidth cost and all that stuff? I mean, people should come with whatever they want. If there's a reason customers say, if customers come to us and say you can provide a better experience, we'll build it. That's sort of our huh. our yeah. theory of, but. 
in, but you guys but, are directly competitive with Ustream in that I am now, as a Ustream customer, more inclined to tweet the chill room than I am the Ustream room. No, and I told this to Brad. I said to Brad, you know, I am find myself tweeting the chill room, not the Ustream room, because the Ustream room is too goddamn noisy and cluttered. All the collateral around it is so messy, and chill is so clean and better UI. Why can't Ustream look cleaner like it used to? Ustream is just such a mess right now. I mean, is that your well, advantage? Is that yours so, is cleaner? Well, so for them, you know, we've talked to them, we get along very well, because they, they have embeds, right? Their whole idea is they want Ustream to be ubiquitous, including, right. uh, including on, on Chill, right? Because they, if they control that flash, right, they, uh, they get to run ads, mm -hmm. they get to do their monetization, that gives them a broader sphere. So really, having something like Chill is a good thing for Ustream. Yeah. Um, I... As I told you during uh, our lunch today before the show, I think that you should let people tip whoever is in there. Like a tipping gifting economy would be incredible. If I could log is this in. this my tip for being on the show? Yeah, right. It's like $200 <laughs> worth of beer. Uh, if you perish, you get to put $10 in. Feel free. Um, anyway, what do you think of that idea of like putting some sort of commerce level in there where I could give a tip to whoever is the DJ at the moment. Yeah, so the first time I heard you, you, you were the first one to suggest it, and I, I liked the Had idea immediately. Had you thought of that before? Uh, we talk about everything at the right, office. Right, so really, it must the, have come up at Yeah, the point. key of being an entrepreneur is really prioritizing, listening and saying, yeah. you know, you, you in essence end up having every idea. Look, at this person docs it, I so want tips matter. for good presenters. Yeah, and yeah. I think that How many people in the chat would room would, uh, would get, if they, if they had the ability to buy $10 at a time, you know, tip money, you know, Chill coins would would buy chill coins and give them. Would anybody in there do that? I wonder. Would you do that? You could use Facebook credits as a API. Yeah, they could. Well, I don't know if you. Could, uh, somebody says mayor says they would. I wouldn't mind to tip. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I said I would do it. people yeah, would for better content because you could in the you no. Could, well, here's the LX, thing. Huh? You could incorporate that. Magazine, That's no. good. You want the honest responses when you yeah. go and ask about a company to your virtual friends, chill coins says, oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah, freelance money. CTO says it's dumb. They say they pay money for Dan's shirt. Yeah, what's going on with that shirt? How much I, is that? I always. What is that? Is that a Franco Cabal or whatever that? Uh, what is that? That's Etro. Uh, it's, I don't even know what Etro I, is. I just wear bright color stuff. I don't know if the world. Got, and we both stuff. have. Now let's get to the Tesla. Okay. You buy yourself a Tesla. You get on the waiting list. You're number two hundred or something. Something I don't remember exactly where. But we But you're at. very low. Yeah. You put down a full deposit. And then I find out the that this guy has one. This guy being me. Yes. All of a sudden, and not only do I have one. <laughs> I have the 16th one, and I order the color orange. Which is I, your favorite color? Well, I was going to say I have the uh, orange watch. My orange laptop's put away. I'm yes, using and I have here. an orange watch too, and I've got an orange laptop. Orange coffee. Well, we could. I could we could. Take an orange job. I got an orange car. I got this. I got orange. Is my favorite color. Orange is also your favorite color. I got my orange pen. Everybody knows orange. No, I just like bright colors. I'm like not, bright colors, uh, not orange. You're not in an orange file. No, not in but the sense But you find out that I have an orange Tesla, and and I am driving around LA. And I don't get mine for another year because year. They, they take a little bit to produce. They take a little bit. So I'm just more jealous, to be honest, so, that you but, get to drive yours around but for But then, year. now, in Los Angeles, there's two orange Teslas, and there's a constant well, people telling you that they saw there. me and people telling me they saw you. Well, here's the thing. I, Nobody to be honest, I, keep, I tend to stay out of the press. I tend to keep a pretty low profile. You're obviously well-known. Yeah. Uh, it, it could, hugely compared. So usually when I show up, Places they're nice tweets. Jason Kalkanis just showed up at this event. It happens all the time that, that people say, "Are you here?" and they take a picture of your car and then they tweet it. Jason, is this your car at the strip club? And I'm like, I don't go to strip club. <laughs> Dan is the guy who's constantly. How many nights a week are you at the strip club? I, I you and, know. You, and you park the orange Tesla. Though, there. though, funnily <laughs> enough, you know, cheap, cheap, cheap startup real estate. Um, our offices are actually directly across from a strip club. On, are you are you across yeah. from 18 OK on Sunset Strip? Uh, not that one, but we'll, yeah, we're we're across from one of the. Wait, which I, one? Tony's? No. Uh, Vinny's? <laughs> you know. Far, Esquire. <laughs> which one? Uh, body shop. The, oh yes, I know the body shop. So we. Is, so I assume that any time I'm parked there, people. Will, the body shop. I think that's what uh, what it's called. It's. All right. Here we go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Dan. You were a great guest. I think uh, you would be in the running for Guest of the Year. What, what great stories you have. And I love having an entrepreneur on the program who's been through it all and is willing to share the stories and who's made a little bit of cheddar, put his cheddar to work, gotten his ass kicked, kicked some ass, as I said at the beginning of the program. Was this program everything you asked for? If not, 
I, I don't know how to help you. I mean, this is as good as it gets, people. This is inspiring. It's informative. That's what we do at This Week in Startups. I beg you, please, check out This Week in Venture Capital. Check out Pensado's Place for audio engineers. Check out This Week in Social Media, This Week in Sales. We're building a network of shows that will help you get better at whatever it is you do. That's the point of the thisweekend.com network. Please check out our other eight shows. They're doing wonderfully. Thank you, Scott Walker, for providing awesome, affordable uh, services to startup companies, 310-288-6667. Tyler, I'm going to put that on the side of your head. Yeah, we ask, does Tyler remember the number? Do we still have 288-6667, yeah. Yeah, you go. But do we have... Uh, I'm trying to get a I was playing last time along to get them to remember... We're gonna put a, a you know we're gonna mean? put a logo on the side of his head. Yeah, is that how much would you pay to put the chill.com logo on the side of his head? <laughs> I would would you pay a thousand an episode? I, I think I would. See? I, yeah, I would. That would be how good much marketing. do I get of that? How much most gotta take his car on camera is saying it would be all mine. Really? Yeah. When we discussed it. Alright, it's fine, that's fine. If you could you could sell the side of your head to whoever you want. But you gotta let Mo sell it and he's gotta take his cut. No, you said uh, it's on camera. You told Mo, Mo Mo needs to get his beak wet. He buys you all those mochas. Come on, let Mo sell the side of your head. Would you he put tried a tattoo to. on? He tried to. I think he called a oh couple places. Oh my god, it would be he so He tried to get great. Media Temple next door. Because it's Temple, really? like uh, Media Temple. Media but, Temple. Yeah. I'm telling you, if the, it, that would be the best ad. You, show me Tyler's head there for a second. Show me Tyler on the camera. Tyler does have a very nice head. Look at that. You could probably see it from here. We'd have to get like a side shot. We'd have to set up another camera, so it'd be a little expense, but we'll do it. Okay, hey, and thank you, GoToMeeting, at GoToMeeting, GoToMeeting, GoToMeeting. It is flawless. I love GoToMeeting. Kieran, you said how many GoToMeetings per week for me? I can't even keep track. How many? Seriously, how many meetings do I do a like, week? Like two, three, depending on the week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's just the angel investing yes, meetings. Yes. There's other meetings too. Right. But this angel investing means two or three. Always interesting stuff coming across and always rock solid with GoToMeeting. Rock, rock, rock solid. Uh, and thank you, Kieran, uh, for reading um, Carolyn's horrible, horrible. Fake startup this week, and Carolyn did a terrible job. Oh, that was easy. I, I didn't so know easy, Carolyn. Really bad job. No, I'm, I can't say that. I mean, Carolyn's very <laughs> Those sensitive. Those were fun. Uh, good job, Carolyn, in letting us uh, win. I think Carolyn was being nice. She wanted to let us win. I think that's what it is after a couple yeah. frustrating weeks. So I appreciate that. Um, and uh, congratulations, Carolyn, on your wedding and everything. That's very nice. Um, and... Uh, hey, everybody, rate the show in the chat room uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being epic, amazing, 9 being great, 8 being good, 7 being okay, 6 being average, whatever, less than average, 42, I like that, 8, 8.5, 8.5. See, I felt like this was a pretty yeah, strong show. Yeah, I love watching it on shell. This is uh, very fun. Yeah, I mean, but remember I told you people stay twice as long when it's chill, and they'll stay in here for... Like, half the people will stay in the room. So, um, hey, let's end the show, but leave the microphones up. We'll see you next time on This Week in Startups. Is there a show going on in here next? Web design. Web design is coming up next. What time? When does web design start? Okay. And, uh, hey, put... Yeah, pick your break. Hey, guys, so the uh, show web design is coming up next. Stick around for Jose, and he's going to teach you something about web design right after this. On the thisweekend.com network. Stick with us, everybody. Stick with us, everybody. All right, let's go work on this presentation. Let me make this presentation clear. Okay. Good show. Thank you. Man. That was fun. You just rocked it, buddy. Good ones? Oh, really? Wow. Yep. I wonder yeah, why. That uh, conversations are better when it's more not being scored. Well, that's big for a And I, I have reasons to suspect Twitter's going to get in their game. Uh, oh, really? Provide some sort of yeah. score yeah. to marketers. Although that's counter to what Chris is saying. Right. Yeah. right. Okay, guys. Not, not, not Twitter actually. Twitter isn't going to get into it, but uh, formerly known as Twitter is going to get into it. Like, you know how a lot of people have left Twitter, the, the, oh, the original cool. tech team. Uh, and all. Oh, you're saying the yeah. obvious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Dave funeral was my ringer. I thought for sure that you guys would be like, that is, no, that sounds like maybe you should make it up. The name wasn't great, but. No, but it sounds so much like the coolest, like exactly what Jason said, like someone from Web 1.0 and they still, and, but <laughs> no, Dave funeral was very legitimate. <laughs> I was gonna say.